started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Welcome to another episode of the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited about today's episode because we have my mentor, my coach, Gail Keys Allen. She is the life coach who left her corporate life behind to focus on true quality of life. We'll be discussing self-love, self-care, and being unapologetic as a mother and as a woman. Gail, welcome. Thank you for being here. I've just been here chilling out, playing with Xavier, just... <laughs> I have a very easy day today. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to do something a little different. Yes, I'm excited. You you know me, so. (laughs) I like different. I like fun. Yes, hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to the Wake Up Winning Challenge. Today, we have a very special guest, my coach. (laughs) This is Gail Allen Keys. I am so happy. He's Alan. And I am so happy you are here. Feel free to tell us a little bit about you. Good morning, everybody. This is so different for me because I'm used to like being able to see people's comments and all that kind of thing. So anyway, I am a life and business coach. I work with high achieving women, professional women who want to leave corporate, start their own business and make money and have an amazing life. I also help women get in touch with what they desire, what they truly desire, not the life that society has told them they should have, (laughs) right? That should is a big one. Yeah, the shoulds (laughs) and the have tos. Mm -hmm. And those are... um, Yeah. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to start with a centering practice and get us to drop into our body, get us to just be present in the moment now. And then we'll go ahead and you could take over. It's your space if you want it. I have questions if you want that as well. But I just love the free flow of it, of just like seeing what comes up because it's going to serve whoever is meant to serve today is the purpose of us being here. So for those that have been with me, knows that we start all our mornings with a centering. If you're in a chair, I'm going to have you move your bottom off the chair, just a little bit off the chair towards the end, the front end of the chair. You can also stand for this, or you can also lay down. We're just going to start to arrive into who we are in this moment, arrive into our bodies by connecting to our breath. So we're just going to take a few deep breaths here. We're going to start to sense our body for any heat, any coldness, any movement. For me today, I have like movement in my toes and my feet. (laughs) They're not at a standstill. And I think it's just excitement because my husband came home last night and surprised surprised me. (laughs) So I think I'm super feeling excited today in my body personally. (sighs) So yeah, we're not gonna judge whatever comes up for us. If you feel any tension in your body, I'm just going to be with it all. Hmm. A couple more deep breaths here. We're going to start to soften our gaze. And when we soften our gaze, we should be able to see our peripherals. Our way of seeing will expand just by softening that gaze. We'll start to relax our jaw, release our tongue from the top of our mouth, and relax our shoulders. You could go ahead and do a little wiggle on those shoulders before we relax them. Hmm. So start to relax your upper half of your, your lower half, going to relax our thighs, our lower legs, our toes, and then go up to our back body, the back of our calves, back of our thighs, our lower back, our upper back, backs of our neck, 
And we're going to start to lengthen ourselves. We're going to start to witness our length. So we're going to go from top to bottom, bottom to top, from the top of our heads, the bottom of our toes, from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head. And this morning, I want you to really take up space. So I want you to go ahead and extend your hands all the way up to the sky and feel from the tip of your fingers all the way to the bottom of your feet. How does that feel to take up a little bit more space this morning? When we're in our length, we are in our dignity. We are in our self-worth, our self-esteem, how we're taking up space and showing up in the world. And for some of us, it might feel heavy. For some of us, it might feel really good to lengthen and take off this space. So we're just witnessing, we're just observing. Go ahead and shake that out a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and have you rock that side to side for me. And we're gonna lift, we're gonna center and width this morning. Mm. We're just gonna be taking up some space this morning. And that's why we're doing a little bit of movement from side to side. So we're gonna start to notice our width from our shoulders to our shoulders. Notice our clothes on the outside of our body. And our, our width is our boundaries, is what we keep out and what we let in. Our width is we say to ourselves, we value us, we value me, I value me. So therefore I am putting up this boundary. So this is how we keep people in. This is how we keep people out. And what if you were to open that up today? Open up your width, open up how much you can let in, how much goodness, how much joy. How does that feel for you? Does that feel heavy? Does that feel good? And then let's do the opposite. Let's set up a boundary. Let's put our hands straight out and keep whatever it is. I don't know what comes to your mind that you wanna keep out. How does that feel to put up that wall? Mm, let's shake that out too. Now we're gonna to center in depth. So we're gonna to go to our back body. Since we're always forward moving, we're gonna settle back into our back body. And our back body is what has brought us up to this point. Our back body is our history, our culture, our teaching, our programming. It's what has made us who we are today. It's what has made us us, what has made you you. <sighs> and I just want you to feel today for any sensation you feel back there. Does it feel good to lean back? onto all that you've been through, all that you've created, all that's brought you here today? Or does it give you a little pause? If we can take the things that we have learned from the past as lessons and implement from that place of learning, it's a little bit easier to take that look back into ourselves without that judgment piece. So yeah, whatever is coming up for you, it is totally okay this morning. And then we'll move back to our front body and we'll look into out into the future. <laughs> does it make you smile? Does it cause a little bit of overwhelm? What does it cause for you looking out into the future? What is that feeling? Is it hope for a better tomorrow? We'll just come back into our body. I'll have you place your hand under your belly button to just bring you here now. And I'll have you take your breath and drop it down to beat your hand. We're just gonna be back in our body right now. And I'm gonna pose that question again to you that I asked yesterday, which is what is important to you in this moment? What is important to you right now? What matters most to you? I'll go ahead and shake that out. It settled me down this morning. I was like, I was saying a little movement in my body, feeling that excitement and centering just now has brought me back into this this moment and I'm here. I'm here with you guys. How did it make you feel, Gail? So relaxed. <laughs> yeah. And when you asked about what what was your question? What are you looking forward to? Mm -hmm. the, the thing that came up for me is my next breath. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That, that's <laughs> so amazing. I love just that. Came to me like just oh. looking forward to my next breath. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, I love that so much. To me, it was like excitement for all that's happening, all that's unfolding and excitement for the Make Life Fun podcast, excitement for my coaching program. It's just excitement for life and what I'm birthing because it does. It feels like, it feels like these are my babies. 
And so, yeah, I love that that came up for you, your breath. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so like powerful. It really is. It really is. It's funny, you know, I was thinking about your theme, wake up winning. Mm -hmm. And so this morning I paid attention to what I naturally do. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I really wanted to talk about. When I wake up, I allow myself to lay there and just be, and just kind of take in, just allow myself to relax. Because for many years, you know, I was in corporate America and I, set the alarm for 5, 5.30, jumped up, got dressed really fast, and everything was like quick and mm -hmm. fast and panicky and rushing. And so now that I work full time for myself, I take the time to just be, and that could be five minutes, that could be 30 minutes. I love sound and music. Mm -hmm. So lately I've been listening to like a lot of affirmations and music that raised my vibration. Mm -hmm. And so that's like one of the first things I do too is play some music as I'm getting my shower, brushing my teeth. I do what's called mirror work. And so for some people may have heard of it, maybe not, but Louise Hay, she's like, she's deceased now, but she's like the godmother of personal development and affirmations, really. And so she taught that you look in the mirror and you really see yourself. So we look in the mirror and we, you know, put on makeup, we wash our face, brush our teeth, whatever, but we really don't see ourselves. So I look in the mirror and, and I tell, like I have um, two different group coaching programs and we've done mirror work in those programs. And I tell them, look in your eyes and just talk to yourself. Hey girl, how you doing love? <laughs> that's, that's what I do because the seven year old mm. is in there and she wants love and attention. Mm. So I look in my eyes. The other person that really taught me about this was Iyanla Van Zandt. I've done a couple of spiritual retreats with her and a training with her and it's so powerful to look into your eyes, even to look into other people's eyes mm -hmm. to connect, but it's a way of connecting with yourself. So I encourage all of you in the morning to connect with yourself first. I literally have a little conversation with myself like, okay, girl, you got this today, looking good, you know, um, because society will tell us something totally opposite. We don't care what society has to say. It's what we have to say to ourselves. And so I do that, brush my teeth, whatever. But the big thing for me too is scents, smells. Like I'm so into different essential oils. And so I wanted to show you guys like a few things that I just naturally use and do. So I love Lush. I don't know how many people know about Lush, but... I just went to the store and got a new scent. This one, I love shower scrubs too. So this one is orange. And for people that might not know anything about it, they're vegan, they're not animal tested. They even have a label on them of the person that made it, which oh, wow. I love. And so that's what this one looks like. And it's it has a sugar, some, some of them have salt, some of them have sugar, but it's a scrub. And the other thing that I do is, and these are little details that they make you feel good. They mm -hmm. make you feel like you've been to the spa and that's how the experience that I want. So my face cloth, washcloth, whatever, I found that I'm old school. So <laughs> the, the old school washcloths, and you might notice it in some hotels have their coarser, like they have some more texture to them. The new school stuff, you go and target some of these other stores and it's soft and mushy kind of. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, I don't like that. So what I did was I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and looked at dish cloths that you wash oh. your dishes with. And they had white ones and they have a rougher texture. Mm -hmm. That's what I use on my face. So with the scrub and the dish cloth, it, it's amazing. And for those of you that don't know me, I love to share that I'm 65 years young. So you look at my skin and you know I'm doing something, right? <laughs> yeah. 
my other favorite one is called Rub, Rub, Rub. I, I just switch up on these. So this one's blue and it says that it has a mimosa scent. I don't know. I just, I just love the way this stuff <laughs> smells. Like to me, smelling good, my daughter calls it my smell goods. Like smelling good takes my vibration so much higher. Mm. I have a couple more. This one's called Mama Mia. So for all you mamas, they <laughs> only sell this around Mother's Day. That's cute. And so I made sure that I got a big one. In fact, when I went there the other day, they're not selling it now. And this one is pink. They're all, these are all scrubs. This one, amazing karma. Yeah, it's like good karma. Everybody needs some. So for me, like some people just don't care what soap mm -hmm. they use. They just buy what's cheapest, whatever. They're just mm -hmm. washing up. But for me, I make it an, an experience. experience. Yeah. Yes. And it, it just, even talking about it is exciting. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm weird like that. But, no. it, but it does make a big mm. difference. It really does. And I think that we take it for granted. The other thing that I like is I use essential oil spray. So mm -hmm. this one. Oh, yes. Oil. Essential oil spray all yes. day. Yes. <laughs> and so at night you can, they have a, um, I have a, a lavender one. You could spray it on your pillow, spray it in the room. This one, this reminds me of yoga class, mm -hmm. getting Reiki or something when they spray the scents. But I spray them sometimes before I get on a call with a client sometimes just in, in my bedroom to have an amazing scent. And yeah. one other thing I want to show you guys, invest in an expensive perfume. <laughs> I don't know how many people know about Joe Malone. I just bought this scent, but I wear another scent. This one is called Honeysuckle and Davina. I buy this at Nordstrom. Go to Nordstrom, just go there and they will give you <laughs> samples. Yeah. And, and I just go sometimes and get samples mm -hmm. um, and the samples last for a while. This is a treat that doesn't cost you anything. In fact, I got this as a sample before, long before I ever bought it. So that's something I do. And then one other thing I wanna share with you. So for all of you mamas, like your energy can go from stressed out to being exhausted, one or the other. So I use something, this is called rescue energy and it is made from essential well it's from flower essences so it's all natural you don't it doesn't give you like an energy drink or anything give you something kind of high like that but it just wakes you up a little but the one that i really really like i couldn't find it this morning is rescue relief so when you're feeling stressed you just spray a little bit on your tongue and i use it like I, I specifically use it like I've had to have a lot of medical tests done and MRIs and you know how you get anxious around that stuff. Any, but your kids could be getting on your last nerve and <laughs> you're feeling anxious. I have one client that has a lot of anxiety just around um, her job and she uses the rescue remedy. So even sometimes when we're coaching and certain topics come up and she starts feeling anxious, these also, you can get these in like these little drops. They're, they're like cough drops, but smaller. She'll just put one in her mouth real quick to calm herself down because we just assume we have to feel that way. Like, okay, my kids are going to get on my nerves, you know? And it's like, no, we have options. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to tell a quick story that has yes. something to do with that. So most of you probably don't know me. My adult daughter and my two-year-old grandson live with me. And this has to do with energy. When my daughter gets him ready to go to daycare, she's in a hurry. She's rushing and she's waking him up. And she's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And he's crying. He doesn't want to get up. When I have him and I'm getting him ready, I turn the light on. I let him quietly kind of adjust to the light. Then I might tickle him, talk to him for a little while. Good morning, buddy. How you doing? And then most of the time he'll come and hug me and then I'll pick him up. And then we start our day. Mm -hmm. And when he starts, because he's a terrible twos, when he starts fussing about something, instead of getting annoyed and frustrated, 
I make a joke out of it. Like the other day I changed his diaper and I kind of taped the pamper so it's like a ball. I started throwing the ball, throwing the pamper at him. He was cracking up. So our whole experience was totally different. And when my daughter was ready to leave with him, he's so happy and he's like, bye, see ya, bye. We can use that in all aspects of our life with our husbands, with our kids, with our bosses. It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be difficult. It can be easy when we allow it to be easy. But it starts with your morning. So you see my water bottle. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the sparkle. This puts a smile on my face. So I keep this on my nightstand. It keeps my water cold. So when I wake up in the morning, my water is right there, already cold. This is called self-care, y'all. Yes, that's what I was just about to say. This is self-care. This is an experience. My music. I love my music. I have all these playlists on my Apple but I also love my speaker. I take this in the bathroom. I jam in the bathroom when I'm in the shower. <laughs> yes, I do all of this stuff. That's I why believe I can you. bring it all to, <laughs> to the call. So that's what I got for you today. So ask yes. away. That is, yes, yeah, self-care and it's an experience. And when you were speaking of like the sense and the experience, all of that to me was like presence. It all brings you back here. It all is like meant to bring you here. And also those scents have those memories. Like some of those scents brings you somewhere like beautiful. It can bring you back to a beautiful memory. So like my perfume, I bought it for my wedding and it is definitely an expensive one. They don't even make it anymore. So it's like oh, okay. rare, like right. I'm only gonna use it on special occasion. Like, right. so I love that you were talking about that because it all, it brings you back and it keeps you here. And it's just, I love that. Cause self-care, what we think it is, is like maybe going out shopping, buying ourselves this, buying ourselves that. And that could be self-care too, but right. really taking care of your person, really creating that experience for yourself. It's like you're at the spa every day. Like as you were speaking, that's what you are creating. Yes. And it makes me smile. It makes me happy. And that's how I start every single day. Yes. And, and we have to be intentional about it. And for all of you that are thinking, I don't have time for that, it does not take a lot of time. If I told you what my schedule has looked like since the pandemic, you would be like, damn, how's she getting all that done? <laughs> right? You know, watching an infant while my daughter, my daughter works nights and overnights and craziness. Watching him building a coaching practice, I was working full time and I still did this because we're going to wash anyway. Mm -hmm. We're going to look in the mirror anyway. Mm -hmm. We're going to drink water anyway, mm -hmm. right? So why not do it in a way that feels amazing? Absolutely. Yep. Create that atmosphere for yourself. Let's see if we have any questions. Take a trip to Lush. <laughs> yeah, I've only been to Lush once and that was when I was in Panama because I hadn't seen it before. So I don't know where that is in Idaho, but it's definitely worth finding. I remember buying something that was like gooey and squishy and like unicorn-y and it did. It put a smile on your face. Yes, they, and the thing, <laughs> nice thing when you go there, you, you can order it online. Yeah. But when you go there, they have like these nice sinks. They make it an experience. Mm -hmm. So someone will walk around with you and explain what everything is and they let you try it. And I think it's a, an amazing experience just to go into the store. Yeah. Um, and the sense, that's how you're going to know what, you, what really resonates. What you like, yeah. And they have body lotions. I mean, I, I do use some other things, but this is how I start the day, but they have body lotions, bath bombs, they, they you name it, they have. Oh, you know what else I brought? I forgot. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have ever heard this. This is by Elf. Let me see what they call it. I don't even know. Well, it, this one's called brown sugar. It's not lipstick. This is to exfoliate your lips. And in the winter, when it's so dry and you know how your lips get a little cracked and your lipstick doesn't go on well, buy you some Elf brown sugar. So it's literally sugar, it's sweet. And it, it has like oils 
in it too. So it moisturizes, but it exfoliates. Yeah. So I've made myself some of that with brown sugar and honey with a tiny bit of lemon juice. Okay. And See, it exfoliating. Yeah. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is amazing. I don't have to go to the kitchen. I can just, keep <laughs> I could just, yeah. The <laughs> these, these are all the ways that I treat myself well. So mm -hmm. I'm not looking for someone else to do something for me right? I'm not waiting for my man, for my friend to acknowledge me for whatever. I'm like acknowledging myself every day, every day acknowledging myself. And as we age, mature, change, this becomes even more important because society, the messages from society is, you know, you're not skinny enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not this enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. And if we don't pay attention, we can buy into all of that. Well, I'm more than enough. Ah, uh, yes. You're more than enough. Yes. You're perfect. Mm -hmm. And I remind myself of that every damn day. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are thinking, I'm not that confident. I don't, I don't think that way. Neither did I. I used to be what was what I called, I called myself a quiet observer. I didn't want to take up space. So when you were doing the centering practice and you were talking about taking up space, I was more like this, right? Now I'm like this. Yeah, you're like, hey, how much wider can I get? Yeah. Exactly. You know, it takes practice. And these, all of these things I talked about today is like the foundation for getting there. So that's what we're, we're talking about, I think, on Wednesday. We're always practicing something. And the question is, what is it that you're practicing? Mm. Are you practicing love and self-compassion? Or are you practicing not being enough? Because right. whatever you're practicing is what becomes your reality. Totally. And that one, totally. even I know it from my heart and my soul. But anytime I say that, it's like, it really is like, wow. What yeah. is it you're practicing? What are you right. doing every day? Because that is your life that like you're creating. So if you're practicing creating that self-care, creating that experience, creating that journey where it's fun and it feels good, right. then your days, like, yes, you'll have stressful moments in your days, but then it, right. they don't take over is the thing that they I- They don't spiral out of control yes. like that. And, and I find that I can stay so much calmer now that I'm focused on me and making myself happy and doing for myself. Because then when people come into your life, the people in your life, that's the overflow because you're already filled up. Yes, I love that word overflow. I've yeah. been using it all week. Pour that love from the overflow. Give so much to yourself that it's brimming over and it just spills out. <laughs> we have one question for you where was that relaxing spray from oh i got this at the um, health food store but you could you could get it at whole foods but you can you could order it on amazon just look up bach b-a-c-h we could all use some of that they even those have goodies. for animals too they they make products for animals too so for those of you that might have like an anxious pet or something they, they make them for them too. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our, per, our people watching, Mariah, she says she uses that elf brown sugar. Ah, <laughs> she yeah. likes that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do like a few minutes? Yeah, I would love, 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 love to. Is there a topic that's been coming up, like something that keeps people stuck? The first thing that pops in my mind is your outside influences, like taking over your emotions all consuming making you want to hide versus be out in the world because you don't want to show up as being faking it like you're not feeling good so I'm not going to go on social I'm not feeling good so I'm okay. going to hide so, so that's basically what's coming up. the concern about being seen being seen but your outside influences are what's causing your internal but what if, but if, what if it, now this is where the coaching comes from. Yes. So what if it wasn't the outside influences, but it's really the inside influences? It's the way you're speaking to yourself. So give me an example of what an outside influence would be. Let's say your partner, your person is causing you all sorts of stress. They're coming in hot, like they're just coming in from their day, not in center, not yeah, yeah, they're just projecting yeah. all of it onto you. You, it's just like a 
heaviness. Okay. Well, you know, I like to use my whiteboard. Yes. So <laughs> I, I want to, just based on what you said. So, so your thought is your partner is making you stress. Mm-hmm. Right? Causing so this, all the stress. This is the thought. The T stands for thought. My partner is causing me stress. So the first thing I would say, if someone said this to me and I'm coaching you, the first thing I'm going to say is, is that really true? And I want people to sit with that. Is that true? You know, people say my boss got on my nerves. My sister pissed me off. They made me mad, right? All of that. So you're giving all of your power away when you say my partner's causing me stress or any of those other things that I just said. So is it really true? Because would everybody be stressed out by what the partner did or said? Everybody wouldn't. Depends on who you are. Right. But this is based on the reason you're feeling stress. So the feeling is stress. Stress, overwhelm. Yeah. Overwhelm. Emotional. So what I would really say is my partner is getting on my last damn nerve. <laughs> yeah. Right? My partner is getting on my nerves. So when you think, well, my partner's getting on my nerves, he might have shown up and walked past you and didn't give you a hug and a kiss or something. Whatever, whatever your normal routine is, he might not have done that. He might not have acknowledged you, whatever. That pissed you off, that got on your nerves. You started feeling stressed and overwhelmed. You start doubting yourself. Is there something wrong with me? Right? That's all in your head, though. It's all in your thoughts and your thinking. The partner didn't do anything. What if the partner came in and was in a bad mood? And he came in and, or he or she came in and they were in a bad mood and they didn't acknowledge you. Because I, I used to get ticked off when I wasn't acknowledged. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I didn't see you all day. Now you're not even giving me no attention. But what if I had the thought, He's probably super tired, probably had a stressful day. Let me give him some time to to wind down. The whole energy of that is so different. And so when we think, my man, my woman had a rough day, then we have compassion. In the other situation, we were making it all about us. And that's what we tend to do. We tend to make it all about us. And really, it has nothing to do with us because you already know they're a loving person. They're, they choose to be with you. They're not gonna intentionally do something to upset you, but they're stuck in their own feelings in their own head. So right. let's take this a step further to being online. So the partner has come in and you're getting ready to go live and they didn't speak or they didn't kiss you or they whatever, or the kids or loud and getting on your nerves, Mm -hmm. right? What if you had the thought, nothing has gone wrong because it is what it is. So what if you showed up on live ticked off and told people, I'm having a rough time. My spouse was getting on my nerves, but I showed up here anyway. Because part of the issue is we want to be perfect, but no one really wants to see perfection because when when things are perfect, they're not relatable. So what I started leaning into is my grandson busting in the room during my calls. Now he can open the door. So come in during the calls and I'll say to people, say hi to Xavier. Everybody knows Xavier. Instead of saying, oh my God, that's so unprofessional. I can't show up on, online like that. I think nothing's going wrong. This is perfect. And if you can't get yourself in this energy, Spray some rescue remedy in your mouth, take some deep breaths and just do it. All of those thoughts that are coming up are creating your results. So for those that aren't familiar with thought work, your thought, your thought equals your result. And that's what life boils down to. And I know I'm making it sound simplistic, but literally, for me, and, and I like to use myself as an example because I'm what society says as a has-been. I'm, I'm what they say is old, she's old, she's a has-been. She should go retire and go sit somewhere and leave the world to the young people, right? 
But I'm saying, I'm freaking amazing. I'm a bad ass. Y'all, y'all see my mohawk, right? Y'all see yeah. my nose ring, right? <laughs> I am being me unapologetically. So when I show up as me unapologetically, the result is everybody loves me. And the people that don't aren't meant to be in my world. And so that's what I want to encourage all of you to do is love up on you, have loving thoughts about you, have compassionate thoughts about you, and then your results will be an after effect, a side effect of the thoughts that you're having. And I really, all day, this is an assignment for you guys. I don't know if you had an assignment, but this <laughs> is an assignment for you guys. Today, be focused on the thoughts that are coming up and then ask yourself, is this creating the result that I desire? Is this thought creating the world that I wanna live in? Even the way you think about your kids, you think about the people in your life, the judgments you might have of other people, all of that. Just take a running list when different thoughts come up. That's getting on my nerves. I don't like that. I'm too fat. I'm too short. My hair is too frizzy. Whatever. Because they come up like this. They come up. Those thoughts just mm. keep coming. The thing is that most of the time we're not aware of them. We, we assume that they're true. And so we just believe them. And that becomes our result. So we look in the mirror and think, damn, I got this zit. Or my nose is too wide, or I, I got a wrinkle here, because I hear a lot of younger people talk about wrinkles. Whatever, y'all. Love those wrinkles. What if you thought, I love these wrinkles that are coming up, even if it, it didn't feel true. But what if you started looking in the mirror and appreciating it, that that's what makes you who you are, that that's what makes you beautiful? You're going to have a whole different darn result than if you're looking in the mirror saying, damn, I look old. Damn, I got another wrinkle. I say, show all your imperfections. Whatever you think is an imperfection, flaunt it. And I'm telling you, <laughs> seriously, people love our imperfections. People love our imperfections. The first thing I thought of was the hero's journey. Like when we're watching a movie that is, we're rooting for the underdog. We're rooting for the person who is like going through the thing and getting oh, to the yeah. other side. Like that is how we need to look at ourselves. That's what instantly so, popped in my mind as you were saying that. We hear it all the time. And it's so easy to say your thoughts control your reality. And I know a lot of people are like, but how, <laughs> how do I catch those thoughts? Especially when 60,000 of them are neg or 60,000 thoughts a day and 40,000 of them are negative. Like how do we catch them? Yeah, you catch them by being intentional. And I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, I like my board. I wanted to demonstrate something when you were talking about the hero's journey. This is your current self. And then this is your future self. So for, for anybody can come up with who they want to be in the future. You might want a promotion on your job. You might want to get married. You might want to lose 20 pounds. Whoever, whoever this future self is, there's a journey to get there. And this is where the thoughts come up. The thoughts that you have on this journey, the feelings and the actions you take are what are gonna get you to your future self. And if these thoughts, feelings and actions don't serve you and they're negative and they're resistant to the process, then you're gonna stay right here, ready to take that walk across, mm -hmm. but never really taking it. And so it's important to know that nothing has gone wrong when the negative thoughts come up and I, I call it resistance. But when they come up, what's important is that you keep moving anyway. So when the thought comes up, I look like hell today. Have some compassion for yourself. And it's like, what can I think instead of that? What can I smell that's gonna raise my vibration? How many breaths can I take that will change my energy? What song can I play that's going to hype me up, right? If I promise you, if you do that, when those negative thoughts come up, those negative thoughts will start to change, which will create new feelings. And then it will lead to inspired actions that get you to the self. 
And I know I'm making it sound simple. It's not simple, but it's totally doable. It's a practice. Right. I've started taking myself out of my future circle that you created. I took myself out of that circle the other day and in my meditation. And I felt, it felt really good to take myself out of the circle. I was like, I, cause, cause I kept thinking of it that way in the, I'm, this is my future and we're, we're working together. We're working towards it. And so I took my future self out of that circle. And I was asking myself, how do I feel now that I'm here? That was like uh, in my meditation. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I am elated. Yeah. I'm on top of the world. I am magnetic. Like I just was like, wow, all these expansions. And, so I'm, everything you're saying works. Right. <laughs> it's important to do that before you get here, mm-hmm. because that's, what drives the journey, mm-hmm. envisioning that future self. So how, how are you gonna feel when you make that amount of money? Or how are you gonna feel when you get that promotion or quit that job? What is the feeling that you anticipate having? Start having that feeling on the journey. Mm-hmm. Look for ways to have that feeling and it propels you forward. Mm-hmm. It's like magic. And, and, <laughs> Look, why did, you, why did you say that? <laughs> it's magic. Yes. In case y'all don't know, I help my clients create magic in their lives. And it comes from here. It comes from the thoughts. Literally, you will find yourself here and you're like, damn, that's amazing. How did that happen? All the things that I've talked about this morning is how you get here. So all the people that tell you you have to have the perfect this and the perfect that and do this the right way, and that's some BS. Perfectly imperfect action. Just keep taking it. I've been calling it the messy middle. Let your messy middle show. Your messy middle is somebody's beginning. Your messy middle, it's needed. It's totally. needed. I love the story I'm going to share we went from one of our coaching sessions. You told me to look for dolphins. <laughs> you told me to look for dolphins. I don't know if you remember that. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to find a dolphin. So for the week, that was my excitement. Look for a dolphin because my thoughts create my reality. And sure enough, my son, he has these black and white cards and I, he hadn't played with those cards for months. <laughs> But for some reason, I went in there, grabbed two cards, and one of the cards was that dolphin. And now it is like up on the, it's like up on his wall. Like I saw the dolphin within the week, my subconscious mind, like I wasn't even conscious that I was looking for it. Totally. And that's an exercise I do with people. And you guys can try that too. You can look for a color. You can look for an item. You can look like one of my clients, she likes feathers. And so we were talking about feathers. And she was saying how a lot of times on her walk, she'll be looking for feathers. I never pay attention to feathers, right? But there's a bush outside of my front door and this bird had come and laid eggs and had babies and they were in there. Yeah, we kept walking by waiting for them to hatch and you could see it pretty good. Um, I mean, it was like right at eye level. So one day I walk outside and the babies are outside the nest with the mother walking by my front door and there were feathers on the ground. Oh. Right after the day after my client and I had talked about it. If you look for the magic, it's right in front mm. of your face. Yeah. And so when you ask me about the thoughts and how many thoughts come to your mind, if you're looking for the thoughts, like someone could say, like I could ask you to look for any thoughts that are saying I'm not enough. Like anytime you have a thought, I have to fix something about myself. You're gonna be very conscious of when those thoughts come up. So it's important to be intentional, right? Because we can beat ourselves up. It's easy to be mean to ourselves. That's super easy. I I said my mean voice was a drill sergeant and it literally (laughs) felt like somebody yelling at me on my shoulder, like, why did you do that? Why did you say that? You shouldn't have done that. You need to do this. Well, I killed the drill sergeant. (laughs) Seriously, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't, I I literally (laughs) don't get that anymore. I don't get that anymore because my mind works in a total different way. We have to train our minds and create new neural pathways. 
by being kind to ourselves. So even when I start to feel like off, then I start to ask myself, what's going on? Like, what's up girl, what you need? What's going on? We gotta take care of us. Yeah. So I know if a negative thought comes up, it's to show me something. I mean, I don't have the, the drill sergeant anymore, but of course I still have thoughts of doubt. Nowhere near as many since I've been intentional about this work. And you'll notice the more you do this work, the more intentional you are about being kind to yourself, those thoughts will start to die off. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you'll so stop giving the program. drill sergeant or the devil or whoever else you want to call it, stop giving them <laughs> the power. You take that power back. I love Tony Robbins when he says, now I am the voice. Like, now I am the voice. Like, I am the voice. I am in control of my thoughts. I yeah. am the voice. I love yeah. it. Let's see if we have any questions here for you. How do you not allow your emotions to take over? Sometimes your emotions will take over. But the important thing is to be compassionate with yourself and not judge yourself and make it wrong. And then once you've calmed down, identify what caused you to get to, what thoughts got you to that level? Mm -hmm. What thoughts got you to that level? Because normally we're thinking these thoughts that are pushing us to that. Mm -hmm. And so once you start being intentional about paying attention to what you're thinking, so I would ask everybody, if say you start feeling anxious and overwhelmed, the first question I want you to ask is, what am I thinking? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will tell me, I'm not thinking anything. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Your thoughts are creating mm -hmm. that feeling. That feeling is coming up because of what you are thinking. And so it's important. I call it catastrophizing. Like everything's a catastrophe. Everything is just going to cause my, my, me to be fired, my relationship to break up. I'm going to get sick and die. Like I used to think, oh my God, I'm going to, because I'm divorced and I would think, oh God, I'm going to be an old bag lady all by myself. You know, that was not serving. That's not me. nice. Yeah. No, it's, and we, but we do that to ourselves. And so it's important to be compassionate with yourself when you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, upset. But after the fact, when you calm down and you can be intentional about, this is the other thing, when I was super depressed. My mom died several years ago and the first Christmas without her, I was, I was like devastated. Like she died in September and then, you know, Christmas is a few months later and I was devastated, but I had, my daughter was a teenager and it wasn't fair to her that I'd be in the bed half the day depressed about my mom. So what I learned to start doing is kind of like putting myself in a timeout mm -hmm. and saying, literally setting the alarm on my phone and saying, you got 10 minutes. You can cry, you can punch the pillows, you can scream, you could go sit in the car and scream, play the music loud, whatever you got to do to release that mm -hmm. energy and then love up on yourself. The alarm goes off. So the alarm goes off, I get dressed, I start talking to myself sweetly. I put on music that uplifts me and I'm super intentional. And that's what you do. You give yourself that time out to feel the feeling and then you let it go. Mm -hmm. But what most people do is they stay in it mm -hmm. and then they tell their friends about it. And then we're gossiping and, we're the, and the energy is rising, rising, rising to the point where you can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's because you gave it so much space. Power, you gave it power. Right. You focused on it and it grew. Totally, and because what we focus on does grow. We're all gonna have a bad mm -hmm. time. I, I'm not even gonna say a bad day because it doesn't <laughs> have to be a yes. day, Yes. right? It can be a bad moment. Like I went from a bad two, three weeks to bad days to bad hours, to bad moments, mm -hmm. only because I'm intentional. And a, a bad moment might be spraying, spraying the spray. Like, like my cat died, like, um, I don't know what day that was, a week ago, less, less than Sorry. a week ago. And 
they called me yesterday and said, her name's Sage, and they were like, we have Sage. Sage is paw prints and her, they cut some of her hair and they have it ready. And I said, well, what about her remains? Cause I had her cremated and they were like, no, we'll call you. Probably two hours later, they're like, oh, her remains are there. And instead of me like focusing on the fact that I had to put her down, I had her all these years, you know, she was sick and old. I focus on the joy. Mm. Like I focus on the joy and today I'm going to go get her remains and figure out this is the first pet I ever lost. So, you know, I'm focusing on the love and the joy instead of the loss. Mm -hmm. And and we can do that with losing a job, with losing a relationship, with losing money, with any of that. What if we focused on how it served us, how Mm -hmm. the money served you, how the love you had served you, how the job served you and now it's time for a new beginning Mm -hmm. and it might mean bringing some rescue remedy in my mouth before I go in the door at the vet right it it might mean spraying some lavender on my pillow tonight when I put my head down I'm not saying ignore you know what's coming up I'm saying give it some space and give yourself compassion and that's what I did that that day at the vet like I let myself cry. I looked in her eyes after she was gone and loved up on her. Mm. She looked so peaceful. That was my baby, but she was there for me. She was there for me. And so I was there for her at Mm. the end. And so this is not a sad story. No. This is a story about love, compassion, beginnings and endings. And that's really what our lives boil down to so you know me I could talk forever but yes but I love how you were just saying it's those emotions is acknowledging acknowledging those emotions acknowledging what comes up give it that space to be what it is and then compassionate love for yourself you got to acknowledge it. it's like that little kid on the your pant leg that's just pulling on it say pay attention to me Totally. I'm not going away until you see that I'm here. Totally. And so I love that. And I'm so sorry that you lost Sage. And I love that you, that reframe of like how beautiful the journey that you two had together was. Yes. And that's your that was, focus. Yeah, that was my love. Because that's what grows is that focus on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm here with you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I think this was such a powerful conversation. And yes. This- beautiful this was a beautiful conversation thank you so much gail i'm just gonna close up by telling you guys the max out your life course that i had open on wednesday is still open for you guys to come and join me this course is for you if you're looking to let go of those limiting thoughts if you're looking to control those emotions and learn how to acknowledge them give them the space and power that they need and then releasing them. I am so excited to create this intimate space and hold the space for your growth, your expansion, and your discovery of what you can create. I am so thankful for Gail for being here this morning. I will have the link for the course up today as soon as this gets on our Facebook group. And thank you guys for being here. And thank you, Gail. Thank you. (laughs) You have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.